Welcome to the Unraveling Scriptures channel. The Twelve Disciples of Jesus Christ, hailing from diverse backgrounds such as fishermen, peasants, and craftsmen, renounced everything to follow their Master. Witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus, they were tasked with spreading the gospel throughout the world. However, their journeys were not devoid of challenges. They faced persecutions and martyrdoms due to their faith, sacrificing their lives for the love of Christ. Each of their deaths was not due to natural causes, rather, they were poignant testimonies of their fidelity to the Master and the extreme cruelty that humanity can inflict upon its own. You might be curious about the fate of the Twelve Apostles. If you think they met common deaths, I must inform you that you are sorely mistaken. Their lives and deaths are shrouded in mystery, controversy, and macabre narratives. In this video, I will explore all the details recorded in the Bible, as well as the information provided by the Church and historians. Therefore, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and watch this video until the end. The Tragic END OF THE TWELVE APOSTLES OF JESUS John, the beloved apostle, is a central and enigmatic figure in biblical narratives. Son of Zebedee and Salome, and brother of James, also an apostle, his story is marked by a unique closeness to Jesus. He is often described as the disciple whom Jesus loved, a special relationship that afforded John a unique insight into the events and teachings of Jesus. Known for his spiritual sensitivity and deep understanding, John was of utmost importance in transmitting the teachings of Jesus. He was present at crucial moments such as the Transfiguration and the Last Supper, where he reclined next to the Master. After Jesus' death, John played a crucial role in the early Christian community in Jerusalem, witnessing Christ's ascension and serving as a vital link among the Apostles. However, John's fate is shrouded in mystery and symbolism. He endured various persecutions, mainly directed by Emperor Domitian, due to his preaching of the Gospel in Ephesus. According to tradition, John was captured, tortured, and then banished to the island of Patmos, which served as an imperial prison. It is important to note that there is no biblical verse confirming or serving as a reference to affirm that John was thrown into a boiling oil cauldron before being taken to Patmos. This narrative is solely based on the tradition of the so-called Church Fathers, who, although zealous, were responsible for many accounts and details about the deaths of the Apostles, contributing to the widely used Christian doctrine to this day. Later, John was said to have been exiled to the island of Patmos, where he received apocalyptic visions recorded in the Book of Revelation in the Bible. These revelations highlight his spiritual closeness and present profound teachings about the future. As for his death, Christian tradition reports that John, despite several attempts of execution by Roman authorities, died of natural causes. According to Bishop Polycrates of Ephesus, attested by Eusebius of Caesarea in his Ecclesiastical History, the Apostle John passed away in Ephesus, Asia Minor, in AD 100, at around 94 years of age. However, it is said that the tomb was found empty when opened by Constantine to build a church in his honor. His brother, James, known as James the son of Zebedee, had a close relationship with both John and Jesus. He distinguished himself by being present at the Transfiguration, the resurrection of Jairus' daughter, and the agonizing agony of Jesus in Gethsemane. His importance in the Bible is evidenced by his inclusion in the inner circle of the three apostles closest to Jesus, along with Peter and John. These three witnessed exclusive miracles and teachings, revealing the special trust Jesus placed in them. However, after Jesus' death, James' trajectory had a dramatic conclusion. In the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it is recorded that Herod Agrippa I, king of Judea, seeking to please the Jews, ordered the execution of James, about that time Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James the brother of John with the sword. The narrative does not provide detailed specifics about the exact method of execution, but tradition suggests that James was either beheaded or pierced with a sword. 
It is relevant to note that in the scriptures there is mention of two apostles named James, James, the son of Zebedee, who is already known, and James, the son of Alphaeus, also known as James the Less. His active participation in the Gospels is discreet compared to other apostles. After Jesus' death, information about the activities of James, the son of Alphaeus, becomes even scarcer. However, Christian tradition suggests that he played a role in the expansion of the Gospel, possibly engaging in missionary activities. As for his death, the lack of specific details in the scriptures and the variety of traditions make the narrative surrounding it uncertain. Most of Christian doctrine, however, believes that James, the son of Alphaeus, died by orders of King Herod Agrippa I in Jerusalem, being publicly beheaded. The depiction of James being beheaded is commonly found in paintings, sculptures, and other religious objects. However, other sources, such as a second-century book called Martyrdom of the Apostles, claim that James was thrown from the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem and then stoned to death. Peter, originally known as Simon, was born in Bethsaida, in Galilee. He was a fisherman by profession when called by Jesus to become a fisher of men. His name was later changed to Peter, which means rock or stone, symbolizing the steadfastness of faith he would demonstrate throughout the Gospels. Peter is described as a fervent disciple, often impulsive but deeply dedicated to Jesus. He witnessed miracles, such as walking on water, and was the first to recognize Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the Living God. He played a central role in the Last Supper and was highlighted as the leader of the Apostles. His denial of Jesus during the arrest is a striking episode, followed by deep repentance and restoration by Christ himself after the resurrection. After Jesus' death, Peter undertook a journey throughout the vast territory of the Roman Empire to spread the message of the Gospel. Eventually, he settled in Rome, where he assumed leadership of the Christian community. His role is evidenced in the Acts of the Apostles, where he plays a crucial role in the expansion of the Gospel, especially to the Gentiles. In AD 64, the city of Rome was consumed by a great fire, triggering a series of events. Emperor Nero blamed Christianity's followers for the fire and initiated a relentless persecution against them. Peter was eventually apprehended and sentenced to death. Tradition also reports that Peter requested to be crucified upside down, out of humility, claiming he was not worthy to die in the same manner as his master. The chosen location for his crucifixion was the Vatican Hill, where the majestic St. Peter's Basilica now stands. He became one of the first martyrs of Christianity, significantly contributing to the spread of the gospel worldwide. His death is considered a courageous and final testimony of his unwavering faith in Jesus Christ. It appears that Emperor Nero was also responsible for the death of the Apostle Jude Thaddeus, also known as Labius, Thaddeus, or Jude, the son of James. Despite being one of the least mentioned apostles in the Bible, his contribution and legacy are significant. At the Last Supper, Jude Thaddeus inquired about the meaning of Jesus' words, revealing a genuine desire to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. After Jesus' departure, he continued to play a crucial role in spreading the gospel, especially in the regions of Mesopotamia and Persia. His relevance in the Bible is highlighted in his epistles, being recognized as the author of a concise and impactful letter addressed to Christians. In this epistle, he encourages believers to stand firm in faith and the practice of brotherly love. Regarding his death, Christian tradition presents discrepancies in the details. One narrative suggests that he was martyred alongside Simon, possibly by stoning, while other sources indicate that Jude Thaddeus was killed by axe blows, a brutal form of execution at the time. Regardless of the specific details, his death is generally interpreted as a testimony of his dedication and fidelity to Christ. Jude Thaddeus is venerated as one of the patron saints of lost and desperate causes, symbolizing hope that persists even in the most difficult situations. On the other hand, Andrew, Peter's brother, 
although often in the shadow of other more prominent apostles, shared a special closeness with Jesus from the beginning of his discipleship journey. Andrew is often associated with crucial moments in the Gospels, such as the multiplication of loaves and fishes, where he presented a young boy with five loaves and two fishes, becoming an instrument in the manifestation of divine power. His importance in the Bible is also evident in the list of the Twelve Apostles, where he is consistently mentioned among the first. After Jesus' crucifixion, Andrew persisted in the mission of propagating primitive Christianity. His missionary journey took him to various regions, including Scotland and Greece, where he is traditionally recognized as the founder of the church in Constantinople. As for his own death, Christian tradition suggests that he faced martyrdom by crucifixion in Patras, Greece. Before being crucified, Andrew allegedly underwent a long session of torture, being brutally scourged. However, his crucifixion presents a unique peculiarity, as he was nailed to a cross in an X shape, later known as the Cross of St. Andrew. It is believed that Andrew, like Peter, requested to be crucified in this manner, considering himself unworthy to die in the same way as Jesus. Centuries later, his remains were found and taken to Scotland, but the ship carrying them sank. The Apostle Philip, a native of Bethsaida, the same city as Peter and Andrew, was called by Jesus to follow him. His specific identification in the Gospels, often referred to as Philip of Bethsaida, highlights his origin and helps distinguish him from others with the same name. Philip is often associated with significant moments in the biblical narrative. In one of these episodes, Jesus asks Philip to resolve the issue of feeding the multitude, challenging his faith. Philip's response reveals the human perspective in the face of what seems like an insurmountable challenge. He assesses the situation considering the available material resources and responds to Jesus by saying, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. Despite human logic, Jesus takes the loaves, thanks God, and miraculously distributes them to the crowd. The loaves and fishes multiply, feeding not only 5,000 men but also women and children, with 12 baskets of leftovers collected. After Jesus' passing, Philip continued to play a crucial role in spreading the gospel. His missionary journey took him to various regions, including Samaria, where he performed miracles and baptized many in the name of Jesus. However, the New Testament is scarce in substantial information about the final fate of the Apostle Philip. Narratives about his death are primarily based on church traditions, with a lack of clear consensus on the details. According to reports, Philip was crucified and stoned in Hierapolis, Asia Minor, in AD 80, during the persecution of Christians by the Roman Emperor Domitian. Simon, also known as Simon the Zealot, is one of the apostles whose story in the Bible is marked by a unique identity and fervent commitment to his principles. Little is known about his life before the call by Jesus, although his designation as Zealot suggests a possible association with the political-religious group of the Zealots, known for their dedication to the independence of Israel. Details about his death are scarce, but most accounts suggest that he was brutally tortured during the persecution of Christians by the Roman Emperor. Bartholomew was one of the twelve apostles chosen by Jesus. His first encounter with Jesus is described in the Gospel of John, where Philip introduces him to Jesus, who greets him as a man without deceit. After Jesus' death, Bartholomew traveled through India preaching the gospel, converting many people to Christianity. This attracted the attention of King Astyages, who was pagan and furious with Bartholomew's preaching, ordering his arrest and execution. Historical information about his death is limited, with varied narratives in Christian tradition. Some accounts suggest he was beheaded, while others, especially in the Orthodox Christian tradition, describe an even more cruel death, with Bartholomew being skinned alive and crucified upside down for refusing to renounce his faith in Christ. Matthew, the apostle and evangelist, was known as Levi, a tax collector in Capernaum, before his encounter with Jesus. His profession often put him in contempt by society, but his life changed drastically when Jesus called him to follow him. 
His most lasting contribution was the written record of his testimony in the form of the Gospel, which became a fundamental part of the New Testament. According to ancient Christian traditions, Matthew continued to preach the Gospel after Jesus' ascension, reportedly preaching in various regions, including Ethiopia and Persia, modern-day Iran. As for his death, there are various narratives, but the most widespread asserts that Matthew was martyred in the city of Madaba, Ethiopia, while celebrating Mass, being killed by the sword in testimony of his faith in Jesus Christ. Thomas, also known as Thomas Didymus or Thomas the Twin, was one of the twelve apostles chosen by Jesus. Originally a fisherman in Galilee, Thomas gained prominence in the Gospels for his sincerity and sometimes hesitancy to believe in extraordinary events. His identification as Didymus suggests that he may have been a twin, although the identity of his supposed brother is not specifically mentioned in the scriptures. After Jesus' death, Thomas expressed doubts about the resurrection and declared that he would only believe by touching Jesus' wounds, earning him the epithet, Doubting Thomas. His subsequent encounter with Jesus, where he is invited to touch the wounds, culminates in his confession of faith, proclaiming, My Lord and my God. Information about his later life is limited, but Christian traditions suggest that he engaged in missions in India, spreading the message of the Gospel. According to this narrative, Thomas was martyred by spears in Chennai, India, after a successful evangelization mission. Lastly, Judas Iscariot, a name that resonates through the centuries as synonymous with betrayal, figures prominently in the Gospels as the apostle who handed Jesus over to religious authorities. Little is known about his life before becoming a disciple of Jesus, but his selection as one of the twelve apostles indicates that initially he shared the common call and purpose with the other followers of Christ. The tragic moment that marked Judas' history unfolded during the Last Supper, as asserted in the Gospels. It was when Satan found space in Judas, instigating him to betray Jesus for thirty pieces of silver. Thus, he identified Jesus to the religious leaders with a kiss, indicating who should be detained. The motives behind Judas' betrayal remain a complex issue shrouded in speculation. Some point to possible disillusionments or unmet expectations regarding the earthly kingdom they awaited. Other theories suggest financial motivations or malign influences. After betraying Jesus, Judas' life plunged into a spiral of tragedy. Upon realizing the consequences of his actions, he tried to return the thirty pieces of silver to the religious leaders. However, feeling powerless in the face of guilt and remorse, Christian tradition often highlights Judas' tragic fate as a reminder of the seriousness of betrayal. At the same time, it sheds light on the tension between human free will and divine plan. His death by hanging, according to reports, occurred in a field known as the Field of Blood or Potter's Field. This area was acquired with the thirty pieces of silver that Judas returned, located near the Valley of Hinnom in Jerusalem. The original dirt field was initially a wasteland designated for the burial of foreigners and criminals. The religious leaders acquired this land with the specific purpose of burying foreigners who died in the city, being named the Field of Blood. The name evokes not only the blood of Jesus, shed as part of Judas' betrayal, but also its symbolism linked to repentance and redemption. Judas Iscariot's death is narrated in the New Testament, mainly in the Gospels of Matthew and Acts of the Apostles. Although the narratives differ in some details, they converge to the same tragic outcome. According to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 3 to 5, after betraying Jesus, Judas repented and tried to return the thirty pieces of silver to the religious leaders. However, they refused the money. Consumed by remorse, Judas threw the coins into the temple, went out, and hanged himself. In turn, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, offer a slightly different version, describing that Judas, after repentance, fell and his body burst open, spilling his intestines. Despite the minor differences in the narratives, both point to the same tragic outcome, marked by deep remorse and despair. 
This sad conclusion serves as a solemn reminder of the consequences of betrayal and the weight of remorse devoid of hope and forgiveness. Thank you for watching so far, and may God bless. See you soon.